update. I was going to add the Zignaly uh, data and, and so forth, but what I want to do is do a video where you can actually see how it works. So that'll be next. So I'll just do this video in term um, for you. And other than that, let's get to what's going on in the marketplace. Right now, a lot of people have been asking me about oil. I basically exited all of my positions uh, of uh, oil except for um, my crude. And uh, uh, any of these right here, any of the RDS or the other one that I had right here, I've exited completely out of. So um, sold 50% here. I bought this one all the way down in the 50s. This was a fantastic buy, but it's the same thing as Royal Dutch and whatnot. This was a much better buy and so forth. Uh, I'm not looking for a dividend play, so there's certain ones that I'm playing on here that can give you better range, but you don't get a dividend by uh, trading them. So I, I've traded a few of them. Um, I believe the one that you have in Europe uh, has the dividend built into it and so forth. Uh, if you're looking for long term, you know, don't even worry about it. Uh, I would be looking at, you know, much higher prices in the future. In the future. Short term, I'm not looking for higher prices. I'm looking for this to pull back. It's going to pull back under this level here and likely even under the 60s level, uh, for example, in Chevron. Um, so I'm looking for a pullback here uh, or else, you know, whatever... I look to do, I'm not going to be a buyer, you know, outside of physical oil itself, which is down back um, under, you know, in the 20s, not even worth it here. You already did this, these two levels right down here. Now, what you can do is you can bottom off of here at 20, but I'm not going to be a buyer because there's risk that will go all the way down under the 16, the 14, 12 and even to the the low 10 range so I'm trying to plan out for that in the future um, and you know that that's a possibility uh, but ultimately of course I'm going to be looking for the 34 range and you know I'm not going to predict when that's going to happen there's just too many odd you know it, you got the oil companies themselves being higher in price and then you've got the physical oil being lower. So you get a, a, a divergence. So I have to try to play it correctly. Um, the one that, you know, my most favorite one is just totally blown upwards. And this is the only one that I'm really holding and not trying to trade too much. And that's AMD. And I believe they're going to move to the uh, above these highs and higher and maybe in the 70s range and so forth in the future. Um, I'm very bullish on AMD as well as Tesla, but Tesla, I'll get to that in a minute, but AMD, I'm looking for continuation above these highs. I think this has a lot of room for growth. So that's what I'm looking for there. That's one of the ones I'm holding that I really like. Um, I really like Tesla too. And, but the problem is that technically, uh, getting to Tesla, uh, technically it's hit a 61.8. It has a one, two, three movement upwards. So one, two, three at 61.8 of the prior range. It's likely to pull back all the way back under 600 from this level. So what do I do from here? Is that the Tesla that I own, I hedge against. So I start hedging against the Tesla that I own. I'm still going to be mostly long, but I'm going to be selling 80%, all right? 80% of my Tesla, I'm going to hedge at 61.8%, looking to go over and capture this area back down to 600 and under. So I'm gonna be looking for it to go back down to this 38% level from here. And, and, you know, it's worked out perfectly and it's very logical. And you've got support visual right here. You've got another level right down here. So in the future, I'm going to be looking for Tesla to pull back here. Um, now, uh, it, it's just too perfect. And so I'm looking for Tesla to pull back from here down back to here. Um, and likely even to touch this, 
support area and maybe fill the gap down all the way down here. So you get plenty of room. But you know the way I train. So I'll sell some, I'll, I'll buy some here and then buy maybe some more down here and then my long side exposure will increase over time. Um, but that's just, you know, and I'll let the market play out as it was. Uh, and that's basically what you see right there. But right now we're doing really well and we're pushing upwards and I might even go a naked short if we get all the way back up to the 800 level all the way back up to here. Um, Tesla is more of a uh, technical play than AMD, which is more of a fundamental play. There's a bunch of reasons why I'm just going to be straight bullish on AMD. And I've held AMD for a long time from the 20 range and I've been looking for big movements and I'm going to look for movements that go way above here. And that's one of the reasons, but that's, that's what that is. So you get an idea of my non crypto holdings. Now let's go to actual crypto. Where are we with crypto? Well, I have nothing to do. And I mean, literally nothing to do outside of the short term trade. If you wanted the short term range, there was one, you know, in here, let me go over and pull up a different chart to show you that we had cells up here, right? Um, well, the only area you would look to cover would be right under here. This was a short term pattern. And that was where I was looking for under 6,700 in this area right here. And it went under 6,670s and from the all the way from 7,200 to 7,400 where I was selling. Um, I have nothing to do with Bitcoin right now until it gets to under here in the 5,000 range, in the upper 5,000 range. So I'm still going to wait and we'll see what happens here. It could go higher all the way up to here, um, but I'm not going to predict. Uh, it could fail somewhere within this range here and then go back down that has higher probability to do that. So the down move is has the higher preponderance right here, but I've got nothing to really do with it. Um, just basically holding on to the some of the longs and, and hedging my shorts like I was from the 7200 to 7400 and if it gets above 7600 I will hedge more um, and that's basically it for for that uh, now do I see any other opportunities like for BNB let's take a look at BNB BNB is kind of overbought it's extended up into this range right here but it's not really a short it's just showing temperance back down to um, what Bitcoin might do in the future. So I'm kind of bullish on Bitcoin pumping upwards because of what BNB is demonstrating here. Uh, there are leaders and this has turned out to be a leader, for example. So this could very well push upwards before it pulls back. And I, I wouldn't touch BNB until we get down to here. And a matter of fact, I would sell anything that I have of it in this zone. So I'm completely out of BNB. I took my profits, did great. You know, I was a buyer all the way down here, hit the sell zone. Don't be greedy. You know, that's one of the things you learn in trading, but you get those people that just want to go and push things to the umpteenth degree instead of looking for other opportunities. And that's where they hurt themselves. So that's where we are with um, BNB. It's over bought. Um, you know where I am with everything else. I'm sorry for, you know, uh, I'll, I'm going to go even into silver. Uh, silver was a buy in the uh, under 12 area, in the 11 area. And I'm holding on to that. And I'm going to only sell. Silver is the only one that I'm going to really hold on to without selling any until we get to above 16. Um, I believe gold can break out and it, it's already demonstrated that it looks like it wants to. And I told you the reasons why um, you, you're going to have inflation coming and outside of the manipulation by JP Morgan and so forth, you are likely to see much higher moves in, in gold, which bodes well for Bitcoin uh, in the future, because this is an inflationary indicator. People know uh, that inflation is going to hit. You can't print all of this money 
and not have it globally hit. It's just not, it's not possible. So things in the future like your homes and your cars and so forth, um, those hard, those assets, I call them hard assets. They're not really, I mean, gold is considered a hard asset, but the, uh, the assets that people uh, hold on to like cars and homes and so forth are going to get crushed. It's just, it's historically, that's what happens. Uh, things like uh, consumables, food, are going to start elevating in price. And we already seen that in China where they're freaking out because it's five times. And China doesn't do anything to mitigate um, versus their, their people. They basically fuck them over first. So if you're a Chinese citizen, you get fucked over by your government first. Um, it's a very um, messed up society because it's a communist country and they just don't care is the only thing. In the United States, at least you got people that are um, uh, under, you know, it's a caring type of environment where things don't show up right away. Um, but you will get higher food prices and you will get higher consumables. So your phone bill will go up, um, you know, your utilities, uh, anything that you consume or, you know, use get, you know, they're all likely to rise. Uh, gas is the only one that, because of, you know, the dynamics of uh, what's going on right now, but that even will rise in time and it's likely to, uh, you know, rise. Think of the 70s. Uh, think of what things happened in the 70s because that's likely what's going to happen. And it has nothing to do with anything. It's a 90-year cycle. You know, nobody pays attention to these long cycles. I do. I go back in the charts and I see the, the up moves and the down moves and we've been in a low inflation and uh, deflationary environment for a very long time, even though our currency prices have just collapsed because it's worth less. Um, so what's going to happen now is that you're going to get that ebb and flow to the downside and things are going to change and people aren't expecting it and they're not preparing for it because they have absolutely no clue and they're gonna act like sheep like they always do. Um, but I'm preparing for it. And um, I'm going to move correctly with what the market's telling me. And that's basically it. And as far as um, the future goes, I'm gonna go over and show you guys videos of the Zignally working with using margin and um, leverage and so forth. So that's going to be interesting and I'm sure you're going to be excited about that. And we'll go on to that next, um, but it's premature. I don't want to enter, you know, start put producing videos this early. So this is just a market oriented video. We know where we are. The Bitcoin and, and so forth crypto looks very bullish, um, demonstrated by BNB. Uh, other things look very bearish. So this looks bullish here. Um, other things like oil look bearish short term, but again, you know, longer term, we know what we're looking for there. We've got a solid target. Um, bullish on silver, very, very bullish on silver. I, I don't even know how it's down here. I think this should just spike up to the 18 and even 20s uh, with gold because gold's already, you know, it's led the way. But the reason, you did not see, you saw this type of price action because of JP Morgan. And I'll be surprised if they don't get sued for this in the future, but they went over and crushed the fucking market. And this is what Manips do. Um, they have a lot of shorts, they can cover, they can cause chaos in the market, buy cheap, and then fucking just spike the prices up. Well, good, good for them. Thank you for letting me buy silver under $12 an ounce. I am grateful to you, JP Morgan. Jamie Dimon, you're such a scumbag. I love you. Go fuck yourself. And uh, like you do most people in the in, in the in all those poor Republicans. I, I couldn't even remember, uh, even think of how many were long, you know, if they freaked out or if they were over leveraged or whatever. But um, that's not what I do. But anyway, it looks really good. Other than that, I hope you guys have a great week. I will update you with the Zignally and we'll move forward and things look fantastic. Other than that, have a great week.